So, and I say good evening. Good evening to those who just, if we're going live, good evening. Hopefully we won't have difficulty. Oh, you know what I wanted to tell you all to do? Can't you just forget, uh, forget all but one network? Yeah. Just forget all but one network. So it won't be, we have competing with the AT&T and Melchizedek. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but you all see, it's prayer time, so I just wanted to mention something where, was it in Akron, I think, to the kids, uh, the one who came up to the basketball court with the water gun and shooting somebody on the court and um, they beat the kid to death. And three were arrested. Oh, they were? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Now, I, I, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I do know they said he had a water, they, him, two of them had water pistols, and one, one, there was one life lost. <sighs> How sad is that? And I don't care what they were. It was savage behavior, whether it was eight or or 18 or 28 or 38. It, it, come on. See, this, this is what I keep talking about, about us getting the gospel into hearts. Because I'm, gonna, I, I'm willing to bet if I took, I'm just going to throw, uh, I'll take these three young men right here, Ryan, Cedric, and Stefan, they're out here and somebody roll up and start shooting them with a water gun, they're not going to run them down and beat them. I don't think it's going to happen. I bet my house on it. <laughs> At the most, they might go and push them down, <laughs> take the guns and spray them, yeah. Yeah, but because of who's in them, Christ. It makes a difference. He makes a difference. That's the solution. And you think you think you know you got to get it to these young folks. Well, let's start getting it to the. Let's. I hope we get it to the parents. That's why um, I, I always hung on to an Alistair. I heard Alistair Bay talk about the target group for the church in so many churches. Like we got to reach these young people. True. However, as far as the number one target group. Are your thirty somethings? Why? Um, or late twenties and in your thirties? So, um, because they are coming into careers, they're getting married, they're having children. That's the life of the church. And they get in, then they will bring those kids up with those beliefs. I'm a perfect example of that. You know, um, I got serious in the end of my, very end of my 20s, 20, 29, about 29. I got start, started to get serious around 29 about this. And, you know, I got married at 27, about to turn 28. And <clears throat> I'm having children. So my kids are coming up early in my 30s, started the first two, and they were brought up in the church. And they were really in the church. <laughs> so um, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. 
So let's continue to pray for the furtherance of the gospel. I got, uh, I think Ryan, Ryan sent, sent me a um, copy of an Instagram post of an NFL player who was retiring after three seasons <coughs> to um, um, commit. I, I, I'm actually going to read it. I think I'm going to read it. I think I can find it real quick. tell you just a snippet of it. But he says, I've have, I have, um, elected to officially retire from the NFL as I endeavor to devote the remainder of my life to the further advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. His name is Kari Willis. He used to play for the Indianapolis Colts. Um, he said, goes on, he says, um, I look forward to your continued support through the next phase of my life. I'm both humbled and excited to pursue the holy call that God has for my life, which brings me much joy and purpose. And so, um, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I, I was, that brought a smile to my face. And uh, may not bring a smile to a lot of coaches. I, I don't know the player. I, I don't know if he was somebody that was going to be upset about retiring or not, but uh, you know how we are about our football. Okay. Um, but let's, let's pray the, for the furtherance of the gospel. Um, we, we, we talked to quite a few people on last Saturday. Let's, let's be in prayer about those people who we spoke to. That that word, remember the parable of the sower. That that word would find some fertile soil. And uh, that God would have it watered and that he would provide an increase. That it would take root. And that they may um, become productive in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So these are things where we should always be praying. Uh, in that in that way, um, and less about what we need, because your Father in all in heaven already knows that you have need of the, those things. Yeah. Now that's what He said. And so let's pray more for what's the of utmost number one importance the advance of the gospel for that they will find hearts, turn hearts of stone to hearts of flesh. They may find soil that, that, that gets fertilized and cultivated and watered and God yeah. would increase it. That it may take root. That it be had them roots like that troublesome tree in my tree lawn. <laughs> that was a uh, I wish something would come along and just a uh, lightning hit it or something <laughs> and knock it down and them roots coming all up in the yard. So, um, okay. All right. So let's take time out now. Uh, spend a few moments in prayer. Amen. <clears throat> Father, in the
you are the God of yesterday, and you are the same God today. Mm -hmm. So I pray for your people that we would get serious and understand the imp you have given us riches upon riches in your word yes. that will help <laughs> us through this life. You've given us everything that we need to make it. Yes. And yet, we're not interested in knowing you better. We just, we just don't care. Uh, we're not even concerned about it, and we're not concerned about seeking your face in prayer. We're just not concerned as a whole. So I pray for your church. We're claiming your name, but um, it's almost like we're just playing. And it seems, Lord, sometimes that when we have trouble, we want you to die for us. So forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for that kind of attitude. It seems that when you don't come, when people want you to come, then they don't even bother. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we're just so sinful, and I don't mm -hmm. think we know how sinful we really are. And in fact, I know we don't. So I pray, Lord, that you would, you know how to, to, to get to the heart of every living human being. You know how to do that. And so I pray for your church, your people, and I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would understand that you are God, and there is no other God no. besides you. Thank you. You hold our very lives in your hand. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that. Thank you. We thank you for your many blessings that you bestowed upon us right here. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Christ Baptist. You've given us a pastor. <coughs> You've given us servants here, but as a whole, we are not committed. We we just don't understand commitment, and we, we are really not committed. And we just feel like we can do a little something, and you will be pleased. Mm -hmm. So forgive us. Deliver us yes. from this sinful thinking. I thank you and I praise you. you. I glorify your name. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray for thanksgiving. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the Father God, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we come today. Lord God, give me all our thanks and praise for you. Yes. For you are an awesome God. You are. You are almighty God. Mm -hmm. You know all, you see all. Nothing to just put on you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. But we just need to keep praying, Lord God. Mm -hmm. We don't need to wait for you to show us a boat of lightning, Lord God. Mm -hmm. We just need to keep praying and looking to you. Mm -hmm. For the troubles that's uh, in our country, in our neighborhoods, yes. our homes, mm -hmm. in this country, all over the world, Lord. Mm -hmm. We need to pray day and night, Lord yeah. God, pray. And pray just because we don't get what we want or ask for uh, the next minute or the next day or so, Lord God, we need to pray until the end of time. Yes. Now, Lord, we come together tonight as Bible students, Lord God, just giving you thanks for this Bible class, this yes. Bible mm -hmm. study, mm -hmm. to have a place to come to mm -hmm. and hear your word, Lord Thank God. You. And then we go out and speak to those, Lord God, uh, in the street for a higher, higher reason we come upon them, Lord God, and go and share uh, the gospel to them, Lord God. We know that some, they ain't not accepted today, but we don't know about tomorrow. Yeah. Tonight, mm -hmm. Lord God. It's, hard, it's up to us to give them the word, Lord mm -hmm. God, and treat them loving and kind and humble, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. Again, I thank you for this church, this Bible study, Lord God. Yes. And we just keep giving you the praise and honor for who we are mm -hmm. and for all that you're doing. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> the stone. 
Holy Heart, Father, and turn them into a heart of flesh, that they will receive your yes. word, Father, because your word is what will save them, Father. Deeds do not save us, Lord. Money does not save us. Mm-hmm. Condition does not save us, Lord. Mm-hmm. But only receiving the Lord and Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made for mankind on that cross by shedding his blood, Father, that's what brings us back to you. Father, it's an honor to have a relationship with you, Father. Yeah. And I pray, yeah. as Mother said, Lord, that we will commit our lives to you, Father. Worse, we have to be committed mm-hmm. to serve you, Father. Uh-huh. And when we make that commitment, then we will do it with our whole hearts. Because it's our heart that has to be changed, Father. And only you can do it, Father. So I ask you, Lord, for the people that we witness to or that we witness to and talk to. And for every way we try to reach you, Lord, that you will just give the increase. You told us to plant the seed and you give the increase. Father, so we're trusting that you're going to do that. We ask you to continue to, to draw them near to you, Father. Help us to be the lights that shine in the world. Do the things that will draw people to you. Not because of us, but because of your word, Father. And I just thank you, Lord, for the churches that are teaching your word to help us to grow. And mm-hmm. I thank you for the churches, Lord, that focus on exalting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because that's where our salvation comes from. Father God, I just <clears throat> ask you, Lord, for the churches that have closed down because of pandemic and that will reopen, Lord, mm-hmm. that you will just touch them. Touch the leaders that they will follow your example by teaching them the truth. You said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Father. Mm-hmm. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Father. And all of those promises of prosperity is not what makes us grow. That's not what makes us have a relationship with you, Father. But it's studying your word and getting it into our hearts and our minds and our souls, Father. Help us to, to receive you in a real way, Father. And for the churches that, that don't have pastors, Lord, that you would send them Bible-teaching pastors, Lord. Mm-hmm. Send them pastors that are, are yes. lovely and loving your word, yes. that they want to follow your example. Yes. You said that that's what they're supposed to do. We follow, we follow them as they follow you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Not exalting themselves. Lord, you said that you were the jealous God and you want no man trying to stand in your place. So we don't want that kind of pastor. We want a pastor that loves you first, Lord, and that he teaches your word. So that's the kind of pastor we are praying for for the churches that decide not to, to reopen or whatever reason that they will not want. Give them the kind of pastor that they need. Father, Thank you for a Bible study. Thank you for a pastor that teaches your word and help us to open our hearts to receive your word that we can do what we're supposed to do. Because whenever we approach the Lord or have the opportunity, your word says that we're supposed to always be able to give an answer of the hope that's within us, Father. And we can't know about our hope if we don't know your word. So Lord, help us to be strong in studying your word. Help us to be strong and witnessing and reaching out to people that don't know your word. And let, let us, Lord, just praise and honor you in all that we say and do because that's what people watch. We give you all the honor and praise. And we ask you also to touch and bless our pastor and his family, Lord. And just continue to anoint him with your wisdom, Lord, touch him spiritually, emotionally, and physically, Lord. We thank you for a pastor who teaches your word. And yes. it's a joy to follow him because he loves you. Thank we you. give you all the praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to revive the believer's heart, Father. Turn their hearts back to you, Father. The stone, take out the stony heart, Father, and put in your heart, Father. Direct their love towards you, Father, because the world needs you more than ever now than they ever did before. And you have never winning where you're still here, you're a God of all flesh, Father. Touch more in men's hearts that they may return back to you, Father. Men are needed in the church. Men are, you made man first, Father. And you made woman as yourself made, Father. And the woman follows the man. But the man has turned his back on you, Father. But I ask you right now, Father, to take the stone out of his heart and melt it back towards you in heaven, Father, that he may do your will, not his own will, and his own desires, Father. <coughs> Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, uh, <coughs> humble, humble yourself, pray, seek the Lord, yes. turn from your way, turn from sin, yes. mm-hmm. turn from sin, then you will hear from heaven, then you will heal the land, yes. heal the land, Father, we ask you to heal the land, Father, heal the mind, heal the broken spirit, as we hear about a young, young man getting 
beaten and took down and we pray for him that that his soul is with you right now, Father. We hope we pray for that family also, Father. And also we pray for the ones that did the deed. We pray for yeah. them that you may touch them, Father, and see, show them the error of their ways, Father, that they were wrong for what they've done. And they may turn their hearts around. Let this be a lesson to them and those who watched it go on, Father, that this is not the way to live, Father, but the only way to live is by your word and your statutes and your commandments, Father. Pray for all the gospel, the preachers I've seen preach the gospel, they have turned away from the, the right way, but they're yes. teaching things of uh, prosperity and things like this here, but you yes. want to preach the, the kingdom of God. That's what they want, the people should hear. They need to hear about their souls and, yes. and their, where they're going and things like this. Not prosperity and, and their desires and their wishes and everything they need, Father, but we ask you to touch this nation, Father, which is in the turmoil, Father, about everything and anything that's going on, Father. You got pornography, you got this going, you got that going, you got all kinds of different things that the devil's turned up the heat on, Father, but you still are on the throne, Father. The seraphims are still going back and forth, saying, holy, holy, holy is the God Almighty. Nothing has changed, the rainbow's over your head, Father. The, uh, the, the, the bushes, the trees cry out for your name. They've been in the air, Father, to bow to your majesty. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, Father, we just pray right now, Father, for a, a, a revival of a heart, of a man's heart. That's the problem, is sin, as we were told, the sin, sinful heart. Turn the sinful heart back to you, Father, and only you can do that by uh, the Holy Spirit that is within us, Father. So, as I close, I say, Father, lead us, guide us, direct us, touch our pastor, as he always gives us correct word. He, oh, he never goes uh, error, the different, he goes by the word, by the, by, by the commands, by the statutes. Keep him always doing that, Father, that when we're out there, that we can also spread the gospel because we've been taught the right thing and not the wrong yes. thing, Father. Yes. Only your word in our hearts means anything. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, as we continue in prayer, I just want to praise you for who you are. You are God Almighty. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Yes, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Your mercies are new every morning. Yes, they are. You are full of love. You are love completely. Yes, Lord. And Lord, you bestowed upon your children abundantly. Yes, Lord. I pray that we would receive that and appreciate it and let it spill over onto others that they may know you from our example, from our love for you, for our love for them, for our love as believers toward one another. <clears throat> that we may create a thirst. Lord, I pray for the word to go forth effectively. Pray that you would be with all those who heard the gospel on last week and out in this parking lot. And I ask, Father God, that you would guard that seed. <clears throat> That you would prevent Satan from coming to snatch it. That you would remove some of the cares out of their lives. That they won't be too busy or let the things of this world crowd it out. And I pray that it, that word would find fertile soil. And that you, that others would come along and water. And that you would give it increase. Lord, I pray for your churches everywhere. I too pray for the couple of churches that need pastors that we know of, Lord God. And I pray that you would send one. Yes. yes according to your will, that would be good for that body yes, and for your glory most of all. Yes, I pray that everyone's personal agendas would be moved aside, that pride would be moved aside, that arrogance would be moved aside, Lord, but that humility and love would reign. Yes. Father God, I pray that you would be with my cousin Maurice. You, you know the situation. I pray that you would be with him, Father. Draw him near unto yourself. Thank you for those who came out um, that visited us on Sunday. Yes. Um, Teresa, I believe it was, and William, and Mo, and Ari. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that they have heard a word from you and that it would yes. find root in their hearts. 
draw them near unto yourself. <clears throat> Continue to pray for this community where you have placed us, that we, that we may be an effectual ministry in this community. For Lord, we know you have placed us here for a reason. I pray that we would always remember that. And Lord, we just ask that your word would be, uh, would go forth powerfully. Yes. That our efforts to, to spread the gospel um, here would, would, would be fruitful. I pray that you would be with um, th us this weekend for the men's ministries that are taking place. And yes. Lord, I pray that you would raise up men to, that love the Lord, yes. that they may lead their families. Yes. Father God, I ask that you would um, also give us fertile grounds over at Estabrook. Yes. All the, the young people that come through there, Lord God, that, that, that you might send some through that are looking to hear a word from you. We ask them too, that we pray for these hearts to be drawn to you so that they may um, turn away from doing um, evil deeds and from hard hearts and from depression and from loneliness and, and from hopelessness. But that they will be comforted by you and by your word and that they would be indwelt by your Holy Spirit. Yes. So, Father, I thank you for um, this congregation. Thank you, Lord. Um, we can see, we exceed, we experience, we, we experience your blessings on us. Yes. And I pray that we would continue to recognize that it is a gift from you. Yes. It is not our doing. And so, Father, we thank you for causing us to find favor in your sight. And I pray that we will continue to do the things that are necessary, that it would all be done for your glory. I ask now, Lord God, that you would um, <clears throat> be with us as we go into our Bible study this evening. Um, that you would teach us, that we may continue to learn um, from the examples given to us in scripture. And we thank you for the word that you have given it to us yeah. so that we can pattern our lives after it. Yes. So be with us now. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. <laughs> this often in Jesus name I pray amen <laughs>
that song wasn't that long. And I just remembered I need to print something. But that's okay. Turn in your Bibles to uh, Esther chapter 4. Thank you, sir. chapter 4, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I do now. Um, okay. 17 verses. I actually ought to read it. All right? I read it once last week, and then um, you should have read it. I think I said, I'm sure I said it at least a couple times. Unless I give you a really long reading. I always need for you to read it more than once. And then sometimes read it from a couple different versions of the Bible. So uh, that, that's helpful as well in many cases. Sometimes, it, yeah, in many cases, that's helpful uh, when you read it from a couple of different versions. And I ask you to jot down some um, findings, what observations. There we go. Uh, so tell me. I'm going to write down what you have, and I'm going to go through um, what I have. I'm going to change this up here. That's been up there a while. It is doing pretty I can see it a little bit. It is doing pretty good when not really ghosting. I can see, barely, barely see it. I look, went back and looked at my order. I said, it's supposed to be a porcelain. It says it is a porcelain board. I'm not sure what kind of porcelain that is. I thought porcelain was a glass. So anyway, um, this is going to be Just the right height. That's a full stretch for me to write up there. If there's any, any higher, I'd call Cedric up here to be my <laughs> emanuensis, I think it's called. Have him write for me. Um, okay, observations. Uh, so when you give me one, hold off and let somebody else give me another. Because I know some of y'all that wrote a whole book. But you wait, oh, Brother Heron. I need a little more volume from you. Oh, you need a megaphone?
to you look like a type of Christ. I don't know if I spelled that right. But that, that you that's spell intermediary right? Okay. Very good. Very good. Someone else? Sister Matlock, come on. No, no, you got one. Now you know you heard me. Somebody, <laughs> I got my belt on. Keep yes, it up. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Okay, well, piggybacking on what he said, like you were sort of that position does not necessarily exempt a person from judgment or punishment. Verses 13 and 14. It says, "Any more Kai told me to reply to that one. Do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent at this time." Somebody else. Yes, sir. One of the things I noticed. You didn't just read this now and come up with this right now off the, off the top of your head, did you? But okay, but before class you did this. I mean, yeah. Come on. <laughs> come on. I'm messing with you. Come on. <laughs> One of the things I observed from the passage was the length Mordecai had to go to reach Esther, um, who seemed they seemed to already have some type of relationship with this tell her what was going on. So he had to dress up and distress clothes and put himself in ashes to get uh, people to reach Esther and say, hey, something's going on with Mordecai. And for her to send someone to figure out what was wrong with him. Okay, so, I've got an assignment for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to go back to chapter one. Actually, I'm going to end up reading it because some of that, you're not clear on what happened before. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, yeah, but you, I'm not going to write it because a part of it is incorrect, but I'm trying to take a, a part that you got up about that. One part is that Mordecai, um, Mordecai did what he had to do to get word to Esther. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll take that. Necessary two C's or two S's, right? Two S's. I have to write it and look at it.
position where, like, you don't have a choice. Okay. I, all right. I want one thing. What you, you? I need you to give me one thing you want me to take because I heard a couple things. Oh, okay. Well. The, well, well, no, no. The, the first thing you said was about prayer is not mentioned specifically. It's not mentioned. And, and, and then you said we have to assume. Well. No, I, I didn't ask you to correct it. That's what you said. Yeah, okay. Uh, Leslie, listen, that ain't nothing for you to back off of. Okay. Again, even though it's not mentioned explicitly, even mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Brother Smart, what you got? Well, I'm just going to go piggyback on how Cedric with Mordecai. We see Mordecai's passion that not only did he refuse to be comforted when he put on sackcloth and went through the spirit of the streets and cried aloud, but when he came to the gate, he refused to be, uh, when she sent down uh, the guy to bring, the unit to bring him clothes, he could come up, I ain't coming up. And he told the man that I command, he commanded him to give her not just the, the paperwork, somebody he had gotten the paperwork, that she could see the decrees and the edict, but also to say all that he told him to do, it just so his passion for God's people. Okay. So hot and so heavy. All right. I won't write it again because it's it's yeah. it's up to, he did what was necessary. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have something? Yes. Just I think I'm piggybacking off of what Brother Perry with us with being a type of Christ because I was looking at her like her mindset. You know, she did act in the call the people together to fast and everything, and then she just pretty much was like, I'm gonna go into the king. If I perish, I perish. And that's yeah. where Christ was you know, take this cut from me, but nevertheless, you know, I will at least it kind of looks to me. Okay. Pastor Hinton, you also see the... I'm, I'm not going to write anything because you, you're on that first point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to find that part real, part, that part real quick. Go ahead. Also, uh, you can also see, like, on the observation that the anguish and frustration based on discriminatory actions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, let's see. Can I say we see racism? How about I just write down racism? Discrimination. No, I think this is racism. <laughs> right? It's, it's actually racism, mm -hmm. uh, even though we know what's behind it is not really about race. It's a spiritual thing about God's people versus which we had on the board initially when we were in chapters two and three about God's people versus those, the conflict between God's people and those are not in the, the, the that Haman is an agent of Satan. Okay. All right. Good enough. Unless somebody else had something else, we're going, what you just itching to give me? <laughs> She's about to come out of her seat back there. <laughs> okay. Trust, trust that the Lord is able to provide victory in desperate times for King B, where it says, and who knows what you have not obtained what it is for such a time as this.
Mordecai trusted that deliverance would come. Good enough? Pardon me? Intercede is like to go on behalf of another. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's, you got your Bibles open them to Esther 4, right? Let me start reading at verse 1. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, went out into the midst of the city, wailed loudly and bitterly. Just imagine that. He is, so what, a, well, it, it says, right, these are more, when it's, he wasn't dressed up, he was in mourning clothes. He was, these clothes, uh, someone said the word anguish, what he put on is, is what you do when you just totally distraught. Yeah. All right, and so he's wailing loudly and bitterly, oh! And he's making a scene. Verse 2, he went as far as the king's gate. Put the brakes on. He went as far as the king's gate. It's not going to do him any good to be dead at this point. He can't help the cause if he's dead. He went as far as the king's gate for no one was to enter. But then again, uh, it's coming up to Esther. Well, I could say the same thing about Esther, about it won't, won't do her any good to be dead. But let's, let's go on where, with where we are. He went as far as the king's gate for no one was to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. So you can't come around the king down. It, it's dangerous to have your countenance falling, you know, a long face around the king. Can I say something? I'm not asking you a question. I'm gonna say something. Um, oh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Lift up your bow down heads. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try and remember that we have every reason to be uplifted. Yeah. 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 We get too bent out of shape for any little thing that's not our way <laughs> or that we don't like. Offended, upset. Whatever. We got to do better, all of us, to, to really put things in their real perspective. Proper perspective will help us. Will help us have a greater testimony for the Lord. All right, I'm going to go on. In each and every province, at verse 3, in each and every province where the command and decree of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews. So not only is Mordecai, ancient every province, great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So I should have I should have did that definitely in half the board, but anyway, too late now. How do we I don't know if I'm the right or not, though. How do we how do we respond to devastating news? With some of our listen, I want you to think of realistic responses that we have that you have had while you're a believer. How do we respond to devastating news? I, and listen, I don't want you to think of the most spiritual Christian answer you can give me. I want you to tell me how, I'm not just asking you how do you, but tell me sometime, how do we respond to devastating news? Yes. Doing things in unity help bring positive. Say that again. Doing things together in unity helps bring positive results. Okay. 
S Sister Gordon? Me, myself? Mm-hmm. You cry out to the Lord. Okay. Okay. Who else? Yes. I was thinking, I don't know why Sister Beach came to my mind, I guess, because we're here at the church. But when you announced her husband had died, I, I had no idea. And it was just like a blow hit my chest because I had gotten kind of close to them. So, no, it was, I didn't say Lord initially. It was a, oh my gosh, you know, gone. And then because I was in church, you know, it was like, Lord said, okay, get it together. And then I looked at him, but initially I it was like, which which is true for most of them. Right. Right. Yes. Um, when I get devastated moves after I get past that initial grief stage, like sadness. Well, that's what I want to hear first. I want to hear the initial, because this is his initial stage. Go, go ahead. You get his what? Grief. Grief. Sadness. Mm -hmm. But what were you gonna say after that? After that, I. Uh, I guess plan or look to what how to move forward. Okay. Good. Yes. Emotional outburst. Emotional outburst. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stefan, did you raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna like, oh, angry. I get angry. Yeah. Well, what if it's just a smart? Okay, very good, very good. Not very good that you do that. I'm saying very good you tell him, this is the kind of stuff I want coming out. Is that Sister Hinton I saw? Okay. And then I call people, the two or say to fight that I trust, and we pray together we talk. Okay. So, Robert? Uh, I get them saying, they don't hit me immediately. I'm going to say, it's too old, I'm going to stab me in the back of the door. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, um, I can relate to that, actually. Sometimes I get stuff, I just like, I just want to keep on moving right now. Uh, I actually do that quite often, to tell you the truth. What he said, it may sound unbelievable, but, you know, it's like, I ain't got time to stop and dwell on that at the moment. Because, you know, it's like, I want you to think about if you get a call and your child just got hit by a car, you know, Or the police call you and say they got them at the police station. For something serious. You know, devastating news. The doctor, you go to the doctor, you get the test results, and they're positive. You know, that's that's when positive is not good. You don't want positive, you want negative. Right? Uh, it, it on what it is. Uh, of course. Um, uh, like, you called me to tell me my sister had I just got numb, just just like, and in my mind, I thought, I was thinking, it cannot be. I just saw her. It cannot be. And it just took me a while before I could actually accept. I was just, I, I actually could not move. I could not move. And I was at work, and I stayed so long just standing in one place until my, my uh, 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 yes, uh, came around to see what was the problem. And my, it, it was like, it was too much for my mind to even conceive that this was true. Right. So, you know, I think, and then another thing is, what time in my life, uh, yes, the years I might have, have, have responded one way, but now I respond another way. And then sometimes I just say, what do I need a minute? Okay. I just need a minute. Sure. So we see Mordecai's reaction. Puts on sackcloth, ashes, he's weeping bitterly, loudly. 
okay? Init that's his initial response. And it was the response of the other Jews because they were included in this devastation that was to come about. As it was brought up by Mother Hinton, notice it does not say that he or the Jews prayed. However, we assume whenever we see the word what? Fasting. Fasting, that prayer is included. Now, that's with good reason though, because Jesus like mentioned fasting and prayer together. Uh, Lord, why couldn't we cast that out? That thing, he said, this kind can only come out by fasting and prayer. Okay, and so uh, we see it, turn to Joel. Joel, the second of the minor prophets. So, you know, the minor prophets start after Daniel. So Daniel's easy to find. You find Joel right behind it. After Jose, it's, it's Joel. I, I had a little uh, conversation with myself today about giving you the scriptures like printed out and I thought, you know, I've, I've done it in the past, but then I thought, no, I want you all used to, one of the ways I learned or I started learning my way around the Bible was in Bible study, turning, turn here, turn there. And so it's, it's, it's a good training ground. Joel chapter two. So what the Jews are being faced with is an impending judgment actually. And so the question is, what do you do when facing an impending judgment? So we come to Joel, the second chapter, and they're being faced with the, the, the day of the Lord, which is to be used in more than one way, actually. So you all understand, the day of the Lord has two sides to it. This is the not good side. The, the, this is the judgment side of the day of the Lord. So come to verse 12. Yet even now declares the Lord. So there's an impending judgment, okay? Look, look well, just in verse 11, uh, just before 12 starts, the day of the Lord is indeed great and very awesome. It's talk that awesome is like terrible. Mm -hmm. All right. So verse 12, yet even now declares the Lord. So yet even now, yet even now in the face of that judgment that is upon you, yet even now declares the Lord. Look what he says. Return to me with all your heart and with fasting, weeping and mourning. Isn't that what Malachi, uh, Mordecai is doing and the rest of the Jews? And rend, tear, the, so they would tear their clothes. So he says, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Now again, return to the Lord your God. So right off the bat, God is saying, when judgment is upon you, there needs to be a, a turnabout in you. Turn to me. Turn from your ways that got this judgment coming upon you. <laughs> Humble and crying out to God. All this is included. In other words, get your heart right with God. Right. So he says, and rend your hearts and not your garments in 13. Now return to the Lord. And he tells you why. For he is gracious and compassionate slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, and relenting of evil. Hey, it's a chance th this judgment can dissipate, yeah, yeah. can be dissipated by God. Yeah, That's what it's saying, relenting of evil. 14, who knows whether he will not turn, he being God, will not turn and relent 
and leave a blessing behind him, even a grain offering and a drink offering. Check that out. <laughs> Turn you from judgment to blessing you where you have something to give him an offering from. Yeah. That's what it's saying. How awesome is that? Understand, though, it was conditional. Let's not. Oh, God will bless you and even give you an offering to offer back to him. Hey, wait a minute now. He said, before you go there, he says, listen, he says, return to me with all your heart. <coughs> rent your garment, rent your heart, not your garments. Okay? Return with fasting, weeping, and mourning. So we, have, we must be abased, brought low, is what he's saying there. Verse 15, it says, blow a trumpet in Zion and consecrate a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Guess who did that? Esther. So did Jehoshaphat. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nurse the infants. Remember at the end of Jehoshaphat's prayer? He said, we, the, the wives and children, when he said, our eyes are on you, and he said, they stood there with the wives and the children all. All of them standing there. And look at what Joel is telling them. Okay? Gather the children and nurse the infants. Let the bridegroom come out of his room and the bride out of her bridal chamber. Let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your inheritance a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they among the peoples... That's the nation say, where is their God? This, folks, is what Mordecai is doing. And you know why I believe he's doing it? Because Joel said so. Because Joel is some over 300, the, when I give years, they're approximate. Some 370 years prior <clears throat> to Esther. So don't think because Joel is back here that it's after Esther. It's not. This is not chronological. Mm -hmm. Books of the Bible are not chronological. The books of the Bible are not in chronological order. Joel, Mordecai, and Esther are around 465 B.C. And Joel is around 835 B.C. You say, well, that's after. No, it's before, because in B.C. you count down to move forward. Uh... So, um, so way back here, 1,000, that's King David, okay, 2,000, that's Abraham, OA, four sixty five, Esther. We'll just say 800, Joel. No, I did it the other way. I did it wrong. Countdown. Then after, we only got a few more years, the last 400, no word from the Lord. Then boom, what happened here? Birth of Christ. Chris. Um, um, oh, BC. Uh, 
and now, okay, then this is really, we have to say around 4 BC. I won't get into it now, take my word. So I, I should have put it back here. The birth of Christ is more like around 4 BC calendar because of when they adjusted the calendars and all that. It may be four year uh, room to play there. That's the death of Christ around 33 AD, yes. Um, so because I say it 33, but well, so sometimes it's confusing. You start back and you count down to this point. What happened when Christ was born? Time changed. <laughs> yes. Okay. What you say is that uh, the judgment is because they didn't return back to, to uh, Judah. Say that again. That the judgment you're speaking of is because they didn't come to return to Judah. Their punishment period was over then. Six hundred is Babylon captivity. What are you saying now? Is that no? That's not what you act saying, is it? No, 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 no. no I was just wondering if the judgment against them was because they didn't return back to Judah. You know, after the Babylon captivity was over, you know, like the group, one group, the group came went back home with uh, the Rubabel. And all that, and I said, is that possibly the reason for the judgment? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I mean, they didn't get judged. I mean, actually, there was judgment upon them from Haman, from wicked Haman, but it didn't happen. <laughs> they end up killing all the, the enemies instead. Okay. So, um, yeah, 600 is what we say is 586, but it, it's a period of time where they went. Uh, into Babylon, just roughly, we just say 600. When it the, the Babylonian captivity, these are key times. Babylon, David, Abraham, those are, those are key times to help you kind of follow what's going on. So anyway, and you call that the 400s, 5th century, 800s, uh, 9th century, like that. All right, um, let me go on. What I wanted to show you, though, was this, that Joel is a prophet who already gave this prophecy, who already gave this word, rather, let me say it that way, and it's several hundred years later, and all these words are passed down to generation after generation. So Mordecai had the word of Joel by the time he come along, nearly 400 years later. So that's why you see really them, them responding in this way, I would say, is that this is how they were told to respond. Well, I went all that way to show you, um, and, and prayer is clearly implied here, implied here in Joel, but not so much so in Esther, but it is a good assumption that prayer is included. I went a long way to get you there. It's a good biblical assumption. It's not out the side of our neck that prayer is included. You can't say emphatically that it was, because it even like it's, it's no mention of God at all in Esther. But it is a book where God is seen as much as any book in the Bible, seems like. I mean, I didn't line up with others just to make that statement, but that's just off the top of my head. God is, you can just see the evidence of God working on the behalf of his people in the book of Esther. Mordecai sought to have the Jews delivered. By what means? By what means? 
Come on, give me a sentence, somebody. By Esther, having Esther approach the king, but he he sent word to Esther. Esther chapter, wait a minute. So what I want you to look at, turn to es Esther chapter two. That clock be on speed on Wednesday night. <laughs> Esther chapter 2. I want to read this. Uh, most of the chapter. I'm going to read fast. After these things, when the anger of King Ahasuerus had subsided, he remembered Vashti what she had done. She wouldn't come out and dance in front of him and his boys getting drunk. <laughs> and what had been decreed against her put her out the kingdom. Uh, and she was the queen. Then the king's attendants who served him said, let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king. Let the king appoint overseers in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather every beautiful young virgin to the citadel of Susa, to the harem, into the custody of Haggai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women, and let their cosmetics be given them. Make them cute, make them cute. They gonna be cute anyway, but put their makeup on them. Then let the young lady who pleases the king be queen in place of Vashti, and the matter pleased the king, and he did accordingly. Now there was a, at the citadel in Susa a Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been taken into exile from Jerusalem with the captives who had been exiled with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had exiled. He was bringing up Hadassah, that's her name, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, first cousins, folks, for she had no father or mother, yeah, she had no father or mother. Now the young lady was beautiful of form and face. And when her father and mother died, Mordecai took her as his own. So you see, that's why, you know, just because somebody's comment on somebody looks, stop as Christians trying to add on Bible numbers. Y'all be like, quit lusting. That's not lusting. If I say somebody is beautiful, or you're going to accuse the word of God of being sinful. But look at what it says. The Bible makes note often about people's looks. Often. And, and yes, listen, this line only goes but so far. Beauty is an eye to behold her. I get that. Like, I can see something in somebody that maybe you don't see. Is she beautiful for me? To me, fine. However, there is a beauty where most people are going to agree. Man, they sure are beautiful. You all got what I'm saying? Right? I usually use um, I usually use Halle Berry as my example because she's popular and y'all know her. But so, you know, who's gonna call her ugly? Stevie Wonder thinks she's beautiful. So <laughs> she does. You, you know he sang that song, isn't she lovely? So anyway. <laughs> so anyway. Um, but, but look at what it, listen, it tells you things for a reason. Just like it told you to, about, um, Sarah, Abraham's wife. And it says about some men too. Okay. David was a looker. Okay. Uh, so, so it tells you about men too. It, it talks about, yes, but I mean, I don't want to try and name everybody, but the, my point is the Bible mentions it. But it's, it's, it's here for a reason about Esther. She had a cute face and she had a nice body. And all the guys was like grinning inside, giggling. <laughs> okay. Verse eight, so it came about when the command and decree 
of the king were heard, and many young ladies were gathered to the citadel of Susa into the custody of Haggai, Hegai, or however, that Esther was taken to the king's palace into the custody of Hegai, who was in charge of the women. Now the young lady pleased him and found favor with him. So he quickly provided her with her cosmetics and food, gave her seven choice maids from the king's palace, and transferred her and her maids to the best place in the harem. Esther did not make known her people or her kindred, for Mor Mordecai instructed her that she should not make them known. Every day Mordecai walked back and forth in front of the court of the harem to learn how Esther was and how she fared. She's like a daughter to him. Now when the turn of each young lady came to go into the king Ashuerus, after the end of her 12 months under the regulation for the women, man, that's a lot of, they getting her together, okay? Uh, to a whole year for the days of their beautification were completed as follows. Six months with oil of myrrh and six months with spices and of the cosmetics for women. The young lady would go in to the king in this way. Anything that she desired was given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening she would go in and in the morning she would return to the second harem to the custody of Sheash, Sheash guys. Whatever, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines, she would not go again into the king unless the king delighted in her and she was summoned by name. So if he had her and she wasn't the one, she just went to be, be you know, one of the women in the harem and she didn't go, go get no other man either. All right, that was it for her. Now when, 15, now when Esther, now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter, came into the king, she did not request anything except Hegai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the women, uh, advised. And Esther found favor in the eyes of all who saw her. Remember I told you, about, it tells you certain things about, I mean, for a reason. It's, let me, let me just keep going for now. So Esther was taken to King Ashuerus to his royal palace in the 10th month, which is in the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the women, and she found favor and kindness with him more than all the virgins, so that he set, royal, set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Quickly, what sticks out? He chose his queen based on looks. Somebody else, what sticks out? <coughs> Pardon me? Favor. Thank you. Y'all hear him back there? Favor. favor. Three times at least. We heard the word favor. Three times at least we heard the word favor. I knew I wouldn't get that far. If I start on that, I can't. Because I don't want to stop in the middle of this part. But let me ask you all something real quick. Whoa. How is it? I want you to consider that Esther, oh, so, so think of where we are in chapter four. We have an impending judgment against the Jews. Mordecai is at the king's gate in sackcloth and ashes, weeping and wailing, and sackcloth and ashes, weeping and wailing, and he sends word to Esther. I want you to consider the fact that they don't even know it, that the judgment is against who? The Jews. And Esther is a Jew. Look at the, write the word. I'm 
I'm gonna tell you all something. I, I, I know, I know you all. Some of you all need Benadryl when a Christian uses that word, but you can't go in Esther without saying this word. I, I know what you're gonna say, but Esther is a book of coincidence. Just hold that right there for now. You, huh? Yeah, you gotta hold that. You can hold that. Cause I know where you all wanna go. And the, but you can't go there prematurely. For right now, isn't it a coincidence that Esther just, ha listen, there was a harem full of women. A harem full of women. Just so happened, and here come this Esther. Woo, 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 woo. The king was like, man. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Hold on. Check this out, too. Not just that she's a Jew. What if she was Leah? Mm -hmm. Huh? What'd you say? No, she wasn't. Well, this no, not that she had a bad, that bad eye. It says her from my eye. What it's saying is she wasn't cute. She wasn't cute. What? What if she was Leah? She could say she could have been a Jew, but what if it was Leah? Well, I tell you, if, it were, if, if he had been a Leah and the same things happened, we would know. We would, it would be a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that not only is Esther a Jew, but she's fine. Right. And listen, y'all might not like it. I don't care. It's the truth. Studies have been done on it, too. But when a person is attractive, it's easier for them to find favor. Okay? Case in point. I, case in point, I, oh boy, I'm, how am I gonna put this? <laughs> in a bind. <laughs> Check out. I didn't get married till I was 27, about to be 28. But I've been had an interest in women. I suffice it to say. But at age 24, I saw Esther, Hadassah, at the park in Aliceville, and said, man, who, who is that? He's telling the truth. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. As I always am when I stand before you all. I'm like, man, she's fine as all get out. Be beautiful in face and form. <laughs> In those skin tight bridges, running folks in the ditches. <laughs> and I, listen, no. I liked her. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, and I'm just last word, I'm done. <laughs> I love her more than all the women. The king loved Esther more than all the women. I loved her more than all the women, and she found favor. That was it. She was done for. She, she didn't even have an option after that, because it was the full court press was on. <laughs> she didn't stand it. That little country girl did not stand a chance. <laughs> Just like Esther, you know, you in with the king, with Esther. You know, it's an honor for one, but he, you know, he the king. She didn't have a choice, but 
Anyway, he's the king. So, so, so like I said, remember that. I'm going to leave that word there. I want you to... Don't worry. We're not going to stop there. Because y'all just rest. Y'all will be all right. But what you can do is... Um, you know, just go back to chapter one and read read through up to. Uh, how about you read through chapter six? I think it is. Read up through chapter six, because I just need to give you a homework assignment. <laughs> I'm trying to think should I have you read through seven. But anyway, okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you now for this time together in your word. Lord God, we, we pray that we would learn from it and, and use it to, to, to learn more about you and to walk in your ways in a way that is pleasing unto you. Be with us now as we go from this place and see us to our separate destinations safely. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I was feeling cold. But well, why am I feeling not Oh, Because I got it going left and right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs>